Welcome back to the 2019 Hartford Regional Championships here, brought to you in part by Full Grip Games. Remember, enter in the code LGN10, that's LGN10, for 10% off any single purchases you make with Full Grip Games. I'm John Kettler, and to my left is... Jeffrey Saran, Rap Saran. And we have a pretty exciting round two for you right now. It looks like we've got the return of Zarat Garbodor and a really interesting deck here from Nathan Brower. We've seen him on stream before a couple times this season, and he is using a Sableye deck with Alolan Muck and Ninetales. But it's got a little bit of spice to it, doesn't it? Yeah, it has a lot of little uh, little tricks to it there with the with the Sableye from Dart with the Junk Hunt attack there, as well comboing it with Ninetales from the old Primal Clash set. We saw, I think, I don't think we actually seen Ninetales really play since uh, I think like 2016, 2017 standard when it was played wow. in Raichu decks, <laughs> the lock-in Skyfield. I really haven't seen it since. Um, but uh, there's also another uh, interesting inclusion in there and I'll let you discuss there. Yeah, sure. We've got Alolan Muck. We've got a little bit of that combo going on with the uh, juxtaposition between new cards and old cards. And this is actually a brand new Alolan Muck from the Team Up set where we've got its ability letting you look at the top six cards of your opponent's deck, and for any item card you find there, you discard it and shuffle the rest back into your opponent's deck. So we have a little bit of that flavor of the Sableye deck in the past, where Sableye with its Junk Hunt attack has been used before to great effect with Ability Lock mm -hmm. and the like. But Nathan's taking a completely different direction with the deck here, being able to lock in stadiums as well as discard item cards. And it looks like we are... Getting pretty close to the action here, and let's see. We've got a start of a Mr. Mime for Nathan and for Luke. A little bit of a glare there on yeah. Luke's side there. Uh, but, uh, Luke Jurdy is who we have here going against Nathan Brower right now. Both players 1-0. believe that is an Ultra Ball, the new league promo. Uh, coming down, bidding away, uh, Trash Lance Garboder, and I think he's eyeing down one of his Skyfields. Yeah, that's right, and we've got that all-important first turn setup for loop going on here where we've got a pretty traditional Zorark build in just about every sense, and that includes the first turn setup where it's so crucial to be able to get as many Zoros into play as you can, as well as any additional secondary Pokemon that you play in your list. And in this case, it would be the Trubbish for that mm -hmm. Garbodor line. Absolutely here. Doing an inventory check right now, we're more likely going to see a Tapu Lele for that Bridget here. Um, but however, the rest of his hand is kind of anemic. I uh, did not see any draw supporters there as well, so we could see a Tapu Lele for a draw support as well. Let's see. Uh, he's eyeing that. Yeah, uh, you got it right on cue. He went ahead and got himself an N, attaching that double colorless, getting a little bit of energy acceleration going on here. Although, unless Luke knows what Nathan's using, that's kind of a risky play because by attaching that double colorless to the active, he's exposing Zerua to being knocked out on the first turn. Although, mm -hmm. I'm seeing one of two things being possible here. Either Luke might know what type of a deck that Nathan's using and isn't as afraid, mm -hmm. or in the alternative, he just thinks that the risk is worth it. The, re the reward of potentially being able to keep that Zerua there and being able to knock out something on turn two is just too much to ignore. And a very uh, weak end there from uh, from Luke there, only be uh, uh, dropping down a Trebus. Uh, passing over to Nathan's turn right now, draws a card. We do see a Sableye um, with that Junk Hunt attack. Going to be able to bring two items from your discard pile back into your hand. Acrobike right now. Look at the top two cards of your deck. Take one, toss one. Dark Energy and N looks like is the eye there. And that's the challenge sometimes is what to toss for there. Nathan's okay to toss one of the darks because he can go ahead and get his combo going. And as long as he does, then it's no big deal. And we have that. Let's see what so we have. We have the trick, trick shovel, shovel coming yep. down. Yep, yep. A little bit of glare there with the reverse foil. Nothing on our end. We've got looking at the top card of your opponent's deck. You either discard it or keep it. Pretty straightforward. Nathan's like, you know what? Let's go ahead and keep it. But he go goes ahead and plays the end anyways to shuffle both players back up. It must have been a pretty invaluable card to the matchup. There may have, might have been an additional energy or something there too that really does not matter in this matchup because the fact that he end right afterwards is it's just he wants to clog it up back into his deck exactly. instead of take it out of there. In one thing that's a very crucial piece of Nathan's combo here, I didn't get a chance to mm -hmm. go into detail about, is this copy, the single copy, you can only run one of it because it's a Prism Star Stadium, is the Black Market Prism Star Stadium, where if you have it in play, then when one of your dark Pokemon is knocked out, your opponent draws one fewer prize cards, so you can already see the combo here with that Primal Clash Ninetales coming down into play with its ability, locking in stadiums. 
And remember, guys, with Prism Star Stadium, the only way you can bump those is if you play a stadium. So, I mean, doing two and two here, Nine Tails will be able to shut off any yep. additional plays of any any stadiums, and you can't do anything else to that Prism Star Stadium, so it would stay in play. But if there's anything that could happen here is that um, uh, Luke here can play the Garbotoxin Garboder to shut off Nine Tails to then bump the stadium. But um, still, that strategy right now to be able to lock it for sure in, and it's gonna happen. It's gonna last returns also. There, it's, it's gonna come out unexpected here. Then the Vulpix has not even been dropped yet to uh, kind of show Luke what he's working with. Um, and there it is, the team up Vulpix coming out with another Sableye. However, Mr. Mime is still in the active spot, so no Junk Hunt this turn. That's right, and kind of unfortunate for Nathan to start with that, but just about every Pokemon in his list has only a single energy retreat cost, so it's really not that unmanageable. I think he'll be able to work around it without too much challenge. Absolutely here. We do see a Ditto Prism Star coming down to the bench there, along with the, uh, another Trubbish as well. Um, and just another pass, so nothing really going on on Luke's side, unfortunately, there. Acrobite going into Nathan's turn. Drops the Ninetales and keeps the Juniper. He does have Ninetales already in hand. So Energy Retrieval coming in. Got to bring in the two Dark Energies here. Back to the hand. I love that Art of Dark Energy as well. And I love the inclusion of energy retrieval here, being able to get back that energy, just cycle it over and over again. Nathan actually runs something very atypical for Sableye decks. Honestly, I would say his entire Sableye list is atypical. It's mm -hmm. not something you've seen before, but he runs two copies of energy to re retrieval to be able to get back that all-important basic dark energy, which yep. he runs a lot of. I mean, for Sableye Garbodor lists we've seen before in the past, we've typically seen maybe about four or five copies with not that much energy. Yep. Recycling, but for here, Nathan thinks it's central to his deck. So we do see here a hard retreat from the Mr. Mime to bring up the Sableye. This is a chance now that Nathan to use Jug Hunt to bring back two items. Look, he eyes down the Trick Shovel and Enhanced Hammer. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, too, he opted not to evolve his Ninetales just yet. He went ahead and Junipered it away. He tossed on the Acrobike and then Junipered away as well, um, knowing that he has Red Stretchers and stuff to go further. But just another pass from Luke, draw pass. And then Nathan top decks the computer search here. So big turn is going to come here from Nathan. Yeah, and honestly, Luke's start is just so, so clunky. I mean, we have a couple outs to Zoroark, but we don't actually have a Zoroark. We have a couple outs to Garbodor. We don't have a Garbodor. And, of course, we had a double colorless energy a little while ago. But I think that exposed Luke to a premature discard. Maybe Luke might have wanted to hold on to it, keep it a little more conservative, but, I mean, it is what it is, and the whole concept of Nathan's deck is just tons and tons of hate mill discarding. So, I mean, maybe that Luke might have been able to hold on to that energy and attack. This is the big unfortunate thing here is that Nathan's actually in full control mode now of this game, which would Sableye active and then could be able to you know, recycle those trick shovels there. Yep. So he controls the top deck of a loop for the duration of this game. And here's the fantastic thing about Nathan's decision in the first turn of the game to play that trick shovel even though he didn't discard anything. By doing that, he put it into his discard pile, guaranteeing that he would always be able to junk hunt it back, control the top card of Luke's deck. And so even though he didn't get an immediate instant gratification from that play, it's having tons of dividends right now so he'll keep on using that trick shovel and he'll keep on frustrating luke absolutely there we do see a computer search here dropping down the end in dark energy here i wonder if we're gonna see that black marker come out now or maybe to surprise him later on whenever luke does inevitably get his strategy going here so cycling through the level ball is at the top and does grab the level ball here shuffling his hand all right instead of his deck so I do like that though. Instead of going straight up for the Pokemon with level uh, with uh, with computer search there, gets level ball, grabs the Volpix, takes his deck uh, down two cards instead of just one. That's right. And so even every little bit of deck thin makes a huge difference in the long run because. Remember, guys, this is something that isn't exclusive to this version of Save Light, but just about every version of the deck is that there are tons of one-copy inclusions, tons of two-copy inclusions, and so if you are giving yourself the best opportunity to draw into exactly what you need. You can pull your lead further and further away and keep your opponent out of control this game. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Here. Energy coming down to the bench stable eye and now we proceed to see the junk hunt happen. Uh, computer Sesh does get moved to the front and I'm assuming Trick Shovel's coming in as well and there it is. Yep, Trick Shovel and Computer Search coming to the top 
And was that an Ultra Ball? So interesting enough, yeah. Nathan forced him to keep his Ultra Ball away, or keep the uh, Ultra Ball on top of his deck instead of milling it away with Trick Shovel. So let's see what Luke decides to grab here with Oh, that. and the Garbotoxin is going down from break point. We have a couple different slightly altered variations of Garbotoxin, but same effect, being able to shut off all abilities as long as a tool is attached to that Garbodor. But right now there's not a whole lot going on with it, but maybe Luke with this Ultra Ball can get out of the rut that he's in. Absolutely there. So we do see it looks like a Mr. Mime. Can't tell what the other card is, but Ultra Ball those two away. It's another Garbodor. Is another Garboder there. Skimming through his deck right now, trying to find a, a way out. Is he going to find a Zorark? Is he going to get another Lele for a, a supporter? Probably going to start seeing some Zorark here soon, and he only has one Zeru out, so we're going to need some additional Zeru to really start getting his deck flowing here. Yeah, and I don't exactly see a whole lot flowing right now. I mean, he has to get some sort of aggression going on because while Zorark is a fantastic control deck, has several options in what it can do, at the same time, it actually needs to draw prizes in most instances. I mean, looking down Luke's list, we don't really see nearly as much of a focus on the control aspect that the deck is capable of as opposed to just big beats. Yep. And I, I feel like we're going to be seeing more of that this tournament just based off of what I've scouted is that we've seen several Zorar Garbodors used by prominent players, Luke among them. And I think we're going to see a little bit more of an aggro approach from the Zorark players, but Nathan and players like him who are using control decks can exploit that. So big big turn here right now. He was able to Ultra Ball away his whole hand, as well as uh, benching down a Sky uh, Wabafoot, a Skyfield, DC to the act of Zerua, followed up with a Shaman for a clean setup for six cards. He does have the Zork GX in hand, so he will be able to ride his beating and take the KO on this active Sableye. However, let's see what else he has to keep going here. Zerua as well, and another Zork GX. Yeah, and the thing is, Nathan's list, even though he obviously has energy denial options, it isn't nearly as many as we've seen before in Sableye Garbodor lists of the past. So... Nathan would be rolling on maybe one or two cards total. This one copy of Enhanced Hammer, cheap among them. But at the same time, it doesn't take a whole lot to be able to wear down Luke in his setup. So we did see the KO there on a stable line now. Going back into Nathan's turn, Enhanced Hammer right away on the Zorak GX. Trick Shovel, going to look at the top card of his deck and see if he wants to keep it or discard it. Deciding right now if he, if, how he can manipulate this play right now. Interesting enough, Luke did have a Zerua in his hand and opted not to bench it down. Yeah, it might be due to a couple things. One is he might want to hold on to it as an uh, attacker later on in the game. Another is it seems like he's definitely going a little bit more of an aggressive approach with the Garbodor. But yeah, you know, I'm, I'm a little curious. Maybe he's also a little paranoid about a counter stadium to the sky field coming into play and he wants to save basics. Absolutely there, there. Computer search getting away, uh, getting rid of the, the Ditto Prism Star and a Juniper. And there it is, the black market. I think he's going to start that strategy now. Um, going to be able to play the stadium here, uh, limit down prize cards for any of your dark type Pokemon with dark energy by one. So in this instance here, Sableye is only one prize. You're not taking any prize this game, homie. Yeah, that's right. We're finally seeing the grand scheme of the deck come into fold. We've got all of the elements just about gathered together. We even have that rescue stretcher to get back the Nine Tails from Primal Clash, which is, with its Barrier Shrine ability, being able to lock in that black market and force Luke to make a power play to get around that. Now, he has some uh, an additional option here with that single copy of Wobbuffet with by Barrier, by Barricade, being able to bring that into play shut off the ability of Ninetales, and then be able to put his counter stadium mm -hmm. into play if he Absolutely. wants to do that. Lysander Prism Star, interesting inclusion here, but it makes sense uh, for every fire Pokemon you have on your bench or in play in general. You can look in your opponent's discard pile and put a card into the Lost Zone. So I like that inclusion here. A little bit of synergy there with the Ninetales. Yeah. A little bit of flair. Throw it in there. Just a smidgen. 
this deck is all full of spice here. The Black Market, Life Center, Prism Stars. A lot of these one ofs from the, from the Sun and Moon set, these Prism Stars taking in heavy effect here in Nathan's deck. Exactly. And here's the incredible thing right now is that he doesn't even need a single one of these cards to be the absolute game breaker. Yep. So, for example, he doesn't need that Black Market to result in some sort of infinite loop where he never gets knocked out. Mm -hmm. No, he can frustrate Luke for a little while, maybe like a turn or two, or force Luke into some sort of extremely awkward play, like yep. a premature Guzma, a yep. premature energy attachment to bring up that Wobbuffet. Weird little things like that. It makes you that. overthink, essentially. Yeah. It, makes, it makes you overthink the scenario at hand, and really. And even more important, overextend. And yep. by overextending, that's more resources, more cards into the discard pile for Luke. And you know, the thing about his list is it just doesn't really look like it's that worried and concerned about being able to replenish resources yep. so it's going to hurt him a lot harder than it might hurt say some of the control lists we saw in yes. daytona absolutely there and i think the cool thing about this too to kind of counteract those control lists there is being able to use a light center prison star to get rid of those key cars in the end um that alola muck is going to be huge when he goes up against those uh decks here in the late game once they start trying to roll through that uh resource management cycle uh Go ahead and use uh, a little monk to get rid of all those items that were just returned back. A lot of different little nuances there that can. I'm excited to see how yeah. this deck goes with these remaining seven rounds. Y you know, uh, Sierra and I were talking a little bit during your last round about a fun play that might have been neat to see with the Reggie Rock, where Team Rocket's handiwork plus Bunnelby coming in, swooping in to discard up to six cards from your mm. opponent's deck in the last second. Wow, yeah. A, a play like that would have been great to see, but that, ty that type of play is actually possible here against Zoroark decks with Nathan's List. Not quite because he doesn't run handiwork, but with Alolan Muck with its adventurous appetite ability, yep. being able to discard cards from the top of the opponent's deck, you can see some huge surprises at least capable of happening. And not really in this matchup as much because I don't even see an Oren Guru in Luke's list yep. at all. So he's a little tied up to what he has, and he can't exactly just bank on bringing it back over and over again. And that's the great thing about expanded format. You never know what you can see. We, we I think we both felt that this uh, meta going into this tournament is probably the most established and the most mm -hmm. defined. You know what you're going to see. You know what you're going to get. And now we've had two matchups uh, or two different decks now coming to the scene to counteract this meta. Um, these are probably like one of decks in this, in, this, in this field right now. I don't think anyone else is probably playing the Sableye variation there versus the Jirachi Red Jirachi we saw prior. Um, but these are both new decks that are coming in to battle right head-to-head -head with the meta that has been forecasted. Exactly. They're fighting back and they're trying to figure out some way around Zoroark controlling. And, I mean, we've seen that time and time again where Zoroark finds a way to either control the metagame or avenge itself after mm -hmm. it's lost a tournament or two. So let's do a little uh, up to speed right now. Uh, we are into Luke's turn there. I believe he has the Propagation Egg. Going to start doing the trade chain right there with the Zorg GX. Has two Zorgs out now. Um, and let's see how he goes forward with this here. Trash is going to be huge in this matchup. However, with that stadium out there, no prizes will be taken until he's able to counteract that c combo. Yep, and a lot of complicated interactions potentially going on. A lot of things that could trigger multiple changes in the board. I mean, we've already talked about most of them, but Nathan still has a couple of tricks up his sleeve and a couple of trick shovels up his sleeve, too. And uh, <laughs> nice. between all those things, I think that we might see the game reach critical mass yep. in the near future, where one of these players is going to pull off a whole bunch of combos and a whole bunch of plays being able to get out of the situation that they're in. And, and oh, and let's see, we've got Gladion coming down for Nathan. I, I think that play is going to let him establish his board even more and have even more control over his situation. You know, right now Nathan's looking really strong. He has a combo in place. It looks like these items, you know, things are really starting to look dirty for Luke Jurdy right now. Nice rhyme there. And you know what? Interestingly enough, it looks like it's all trainers in Nathan's prizes right now. So he conveniently enough has that 1-1 one, one line of Alolan Muck with its adventurous appetite ability just waiting in the wings. He's not even showing that card yet. So I don't know how blind Luke is to the deck that he's up against right now. I don't know if he's even expecting something like that popping up. Yeah, no, it's, it's definitely going to surprise him here uh, when he does get in a later game. Once he starts really establishing these trades and cycling through his deck just to get to that point where he can start KOing these Sableyes at will, that's when you'll see the Lola Muck come down and surprise him with, right. his, with his uh, very heavy appetite. That's right, that's Eat right. Eat all of his cards away. 
So we do see uh, Junk Hunt and pass on to Luke's turn. And Gar Parker sees with trades here. Second energy coming down on the Gar Boater on bench. And he has a chance to do a massive Colrus right now. And he also has a chance to do a massive amount of damage with a Guzma Trash Alanche with that Gar Boater. But instead, he's opting to Colrus, get some additional resources here. Don't jump in quite into that play yet. I think I'm okay with that. But that basic energy attack is going to be so crucial because I don't know if Luke knows this, but just going down Nathan's list, he really, like, he is banking on these two energy denial cards, the single copy of Enhanced Hammer, the single copy of Flare Grunt. Obviously, mm -hmm. only one of those is going to work against the psychic energy. Yep. All right here. Do we see any float stones? Uh, yep, we have two float stones on the list as well To re if you wanted to, to attack with that Garboder to get the Zork out of active as well. Propagate, going to be able to uh, bring it to the hand, discard and it for trade. I think trade. I just saw that Plasma Freeze yep. copy of the float stone get into Luke's hand. And so right now he can break that Black Market Prism Star combo if he wants to. Emphasis he on if. Yeah, he, I think he's going to take the normal KO right now on the Sableye here with Zorark. But and he needs to break that combo. He needs to yep. get that off the board. And he has... The tools, no pun intended, that he needs to be able to do that. It's just he has to commit to making the play. He, he has the whole out of turn two. He just Colrus right now. So we're going to wait one more turn to be able to do the Guzma play on the Ninetales, um, which will give you a prize. Is not a dark type oh, Pokemon. Oh, he, he's playing the Choice Band. Okay, so he's, he's going to save that copy of Floatstone for later. Instead, playing the Choice Band to activate Garbotoxin, yep. shut off Barrier Shrine, play his Counter Stadium, and get a knockout. And yep. not have to worry about that anymore because remember, guys, Prism Star, Pokemon Prism Star cards in general, once they're discarded, they go to the Lost Zone. They don't stay in the discard. We've seen players make that mistake before where they accidentally put it in the discard. Mm -hmm. For here, it's critical to remember what to do, and that's yep. not a problem here. Absolutely. Right is beating for the KO on a Sableye. Now taking a prize with Black Market eliminated from the game. And on the this turn, promotes a new Sableye. Energy Retrieval going to bring back those Dark Energies as well. So, we have that so what's the next on. step here for Nathan right now? Looks like Luke is, is getting the ball rolling here. He has a Zorak out, able to take KOs. Is it, is it just chaining the energy denial? Chaining the energy denial is going to be big. And Luke's counterplay to that in turn is going to be trying to disrupt Nathan's hand. Trying to be able to punish Nathan in a sense for his looping of Junk Hunt, because there's yep. a thing with Junk Hunt that can happen that can be very negative for you, where you get to a point where you have all the resources you need. Then at that point, what are you going to go ahead and Oh, okay, well, let's go ahead and pause that, because we have Hiker coming down. That's additional control for Nathan, being able to look at the top five cards of Luke's deck. But at the same time, it anyways, back to the action that we have right here. Nathan could potentially have gotten a little bit ahead of himself with some of the junk hunt decisions. I mean, I don't really think mm -hmm. it could have been that big of a deal, but with the threat of an end coming down at any moment, you could draw into the wrong six. And so, ironically, all those energy back in his hand could be a liability. Oh, I like that combo. Okay, so Hiker, look at the top five cards of your deck. Keep one, shuffle the rest back, and then it goes on and just trick shuffles a card right away. So yep. whatever, whatever card I was, in this instance, Verse Seeker is eliminated from the game now. That's I like that little little combo there. That's well right. done. And that even finds a way for Nathan to be able to get around what we were just talking about with those punishing end plays. By yep. discarding VS Seeker, that's one fewer copies yep. of end that could end up on the board, meaning that Nathan gets even more control and gets even further and further ahead, which is a weird thing to think about considering he's down two prizes, but he doesn't care about that. Yep. Down two prizes, down five prizes, as long as he forces Luke to no longer have a deck and lose by deck out, then doesn't even matter. With a junk gun here, looking to grab back Rest Stretcher. Going to be able to cycle back those Sableyes as they go down, as well as Trick Shovel. And a very, oh. tough, very tough choice here whether to go for the Trick Shovel or the Enhanced Hammer. I like him going for the Enhanced Hammer, though, because that gives him an extra copy of that energy denial to be able to discard any possible doubles that come onto the board. He already has Flare Grant in hand as well, so even, with the, even if he opts to go after this Garboder this turn, he does have another out to it. Verse Seeker in hand, going to the bin, going to look at grabbing the end to disrupt this Junk Hunt, and let's see, is he going to trade first? Is he going to end first? Here we go. Yep. Getting that Psychic onto play. He is going with and the Trash there's the benefit of that Floatstone play. Brilliant holding play by Luke, holding onto that, anticipating the discard of the double. 
being totally prepared for that and knowing how important that basic energy knockout is going to be because Nathan has a much less likely shot of being able to discard that as opposed to, say, a special energy. Mm -hmm. And right now I'm going to put Luke to four cards, Nathan to an easy six as he has full six prizes. Probably won't be taking any prizes this game at all either. I don't see that happening uh, on a Luke's turn. He does have access to one trade still as well. Interesting enough, he for retreats first before trading. Unless he traded uh, before uh, although, the end. Although we, we have the choice band in play right now. That's right. So yeah, Garboder. So at this point, there's a little bit of a trade-off with the board state which Luke is in. He was able to knock the black market, but in exchange, he's lost his trade for now yep. until he finds a way to bump that, assuming he even wants to. But Luke's game path here is to be able to exchange a prize for an energy. So for every energy he plays, he's able to get a prize, and as long as he doesn't trip himself up, either by dealing too little damage or one of these black market plays, yep. he's in not too bad of a position. But Nathan has, has been able to whittle away energy. tons yep. and tons of resources. There's at least three DCEs that have been dropped into this card pile, at the very least. And right now, his only other options to attack out there this Garboder is a Zorark. So, I mean, he has one more second energy and at least one more double colorless energy, but that's only two to three prizes remaining that he oh, needs. Oh, and Nathan has the Flare Grunt in hand to discard got it that the second end. energy right on cue. The one card that can actually deal with that basic energy right there in Nathan's hand. And so it looks like Luke is... Y you you just said that he had three dis uh, three DCs discarded, right? There, there are at least three DCs discarded. I know for sure three enhanced hammers. There's a second second energy desk that he top decked, actually. That top decked a second energy. And took the KO here. However, this energy needs a last for Luke to be able to take this game still. If he, yeah. if, and Nathan has a way to flare grunt it again. That is going to be the riding on the wall for Luke. And he does have Verse Seeker, so you can flare grunt it right back away. Although I don't know if it really is the writing on the wall for Luke because he has that copy of Super Rod that can be so crucial, but with all of Luke's energy but potentially that one double, assuming mm -hmm. it isn't in the last two prize cards, he's that can be in very an useful. awkward position. But he, he, does oh, hand. he has a hand. He has Floatstone he DC has, in he's hand. He has Floatstone DC in hand. That's incredible. The question is, does Nathan have an answer to that? Where he he, he needs an answer. I mean, there's no way around it. If he doesn't have that, then he's going to lose this game. He needs another way to get rid of his energy here, uh, this, this following turn, whether it's Verse Seeker Enhanced or whatever it might be. Another thing to keep in mind as well is that Nathan does have the Grimer in hand, and uh, we could see that Muck play. Was the bolt piece of surprise whenever he looked at the Gladion? Oh, and you know what? He got back that Enhanced Hammer earlier with a Junk With the, with the Junk Dead. That's the play yep. you're talking about where that, you say that, you like the Enhanced that, that's Hammer. That's right. And he has teammates in his hand right now. So while this might not be the most favorable position at all for Nathan, he at least has a way to be able to keep himself in this game and require Luke to have something great to answer it. I think he's right now trying to figure out there's a way to... Bring in Sableye as well as pull off the uh, disruption of this energy right here. So we for sure know he's going to get the Enhanced Hammer. Yeah, I think that's a given. It, I, I think it really comes down to that second card choice that's going to be so crucial for Nathan. And this is the come-from-behind aspect of Oh, is that deck. Lysander Prism he's eyeing down? Yes, he can like mm -hmm. take, take away all the DCEs from <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things he could, t and you know what, I, I don't know how well he would know Luke's list, but it might even be more beneficial. Let's see, just one more quick spot check of Luke's list here. If he got the psychic energy out of the discard pile for Luke, then there wouldn't be any super rotting for it. Yep. But that's the convenience of us seeing these lists right here yep. versus going in blind is that Nathan doesn't know exactly what it is, so what we're looking at might be a totally different thing than what a player going in blind knows. And so based off of that, the optimal best play could be entirely different. Absolutely there. Teammates, let's see, you got the Enhanced Hammer in the prison. No, did you get the prison star for sure? Yes. So we are going to see Enhanced Hammer coming down. I'm just curious what he's going to go after with his last standard prison star. Energy in hand, I'm curious if he's going to attach to retreat when yes. he does find his Sableye. He does have Ultra Ball in hand. Oh, and he's, it and he has like a he's combo. just sitting on the Alolan Muck. I think he's waiting for the absolute right moment to get it into play. And I love how Nathan is turning the ability lock of Luke against him because if Luke had that ability lock right now, then he could just go ahead and trade and eventually slowly but surely draw into what he needs. Yep. But he can't quite do that. Um, let's see. Luke's just eyeing his discard pile, thinking about what to do here. It's a hard position to be in, so I certainly don't blame him going through all his choices here. You and feel blowers. Field blower, the, the choice, choice man. Nice. Gonna propagate through his deck. 
He's going to try to find that super rod is what we're looking at here. One card. Can't see, can't see. You're bringing it too close to you, Luke. I need you to work with us. Choice band. It looked like another Pokemon. It's the other card off trade. Shaman. Can't tell. And a Guzma. Guzma. So that's the Guzma's a good piece as well. But there isn't anything special There's about a Guzma right now because he can't. Oh, and we had the third trade come down. Third trade. Oh, yep. yep. He benched on the, yep, right there on the bench. Tapu Lele. What's he going to eye down with Tapu Lele here? I mean, uh, yeah, I, I think that his options are a little. He has a so lot of one of supporters here. He may eye down another chorus. He does have that hand, but big big bench on his side right now. Seven cars, eight with the one on Nathan's bench. Is he going to have enough cars oh, in deck to? Oh, man, a huge chorus right here if he plays it. And he has a pretty big hand himself, so I don't see anything decking out wise, but this is just feeding to this Grimer play that Nathan can pull off. And see, right now, based off of the sheer number of item cards in Luke's hand, I'm, I'm wondering if, and here's the challenge about whether or not to put Alolan Muck into play for its adventurous appetite ability, where I'm, I, it's honestly too difficult to say right now whether or not it would have been a good play for Nathan to bench it or not. I think he wanted to hold off on it for two reasons. One, he didn't want a liability for potential Guzmaing. Mm -hmm. Another thing is he would prefer that surprise element only play yeah. when he absolutely needs it to win the game. All right, so he does opt to do Colrus here. Going to be able to uh, grab eight cards. Does he hit that Super Rod? Although he is traded out at this point. There it is, Super Rod. Going to bring back both Psychics here. And just one turn too late to yeah. pull out the Lysander Prism play. Yeah. And a it, Shaman. If only Nathan had drawn into that combo and had it in his hand without having the teammates it, he would have been in a much better position. Here's the big thing, too, now, is that Luke does not need to reapply this Garbotoxin. I mean, Black Marcus out of the game. That's essentially what that combo is with the Ninetales. So I'm, so I'm hoping that he does not attach any tools to his Garboter so he can continue this trade um, montage here. All right, Klefki here, free space sub. He's going to try to shame in here. Pokecom. Lots of deck then going on. Lots of little micro decisions here that give Luke the best shot he needs to pull this game out. And even having the Shaman in his hand. Although, yep, I mean, he's got that single space left on his bench to be able to draw more cards and hit one of those Psychic Energy when he needs it. Pokecom, Shaman for another Shaman. And it looks like he's eyeing down the setup here. He would, if he can, he will be able to do it for three cards. I think if he gets, yeah, because he has a, if, does he have a way to retreat to active Zork? Is there another flow stone? Does he should have two flow stones? Yes. So I think he's trying to thin down cards right now. Here's the thing, though. If he, if he's going to shuffle three back in, that's going to limit what he could find with his setup here. So it's kind of like a one for three type trade there. You know, you're going to draw four cards, but you add three more cards into the mix. That's right, although he is, I, I, and that really comes down to the precise number of cards left in his deck, whether or not that's an absolute optimal move, but I like the idea of being able to close this out if he just gets that Psychic Energy. And there it is, is the two of them, not just one, but two, Floatstone. He already had the Floatstone active, on earlier. And gets the knockout on Ninetales, wow. He's going over to what? last interplay right <laughs> now that you were just mentioning to, I was one turn too late to get rid of all those oh, Psychic yeah. Energies. Yeah, one, definitely one turn too late. And we see this time and time again. This is the second round in a row where we have a long, grindy, exciting game between Zorark, one of its rival decks, yep. and Zorark just finds some way to dismantle it. And the incredible thing is we don't even see a lot of the typical control aspects of this list that we've yep. seen in other Zorark lists. Like, we don't have the Oren Guru to bank on. Mm -hmm. Luke is really just limited to a few choice cards and being able to hang in there with those energy that he has and nothing else, no infinite combos, loops, yep. nothing like that. Just go ahead and go in, get those prizes, and then you're good. This is very similar to what Noah Bujak played at Toronto when he finished a uh, runner-up there. And uh, just a traditional Zora Garboder list there. No bells and whistles. There's a lot of one of supporters, chorus line, and it just gets the job done. I'm glad to see it back here on the main stage. Um, we haven't seen any, like, you know, heavy results Zora Garbodor in a while. You know, it's been typically that control variant and the different types of control, whether it's toad lasers, straight toad, and then what we see earlier uh, from Joe Rudiger with the um, heavy Rangaroo and uh, Lola Mug and Articuno. So there's a lot of different trade offs with the Zork in the expanded format. Yeah, that's absolutely right. There's so many options with the deck, so many ways to approach it, and yet 
even with the hate that we're seeing against Zoroark in this tournament, it's still finding ways to get around it. So if this tournament is going to put a cap on this whole expanded format as mm -hmm. we've known it for the past two months, then what a better way for it to happen than for the absolute best challengers to Zorark to come out and yep. try to take it down, but for Zorark to be like, hey, you know what? I've got ways around it. you got a black market combo. Okay, I've got a couple ability lock ways to kind of weasel my way out of that and yep. eventually whittle you down, knock out your Pokemon, and then get the game as I always do. We're about to go back down to the action here, but for Nathan right now, what can he eye down to really lock in this game too and take the, take the victory here? There's no question about it. He's in an extremely unfavorable position because the concept behind these Sableye decks with their deck out approach to winning, they aren't winning on bench out, they aren't winning on prizes, just on this mill strategy. That's extremely unfavorable in the type of best two out of three format we have. In an untimed format, it's significantly better. In a 75 minute best two out of three, it's yep. significantly better. But guys, keep in mind, we just lost nearly 34 minutes due to that game and everything surrounding it, like the procedural stuff before and after, like shuffling up, dealing. Because of that, Nathan doesn't have a whole lot of time. I, he, he doesn't really have a whole lot of ways out of this. And here's the rough thing, too, because, you know, sometimes when you're in these situations, you've got to take a quick game, too. You usually want to try to, you know, hey, maybe I could pull off a donk here. Um, there is zero ways for Nathan to take prizes in this game, take any types of KO. So even as Nathan sets up here, Luka does draw and draw until he gets to where he needs. Exactly, and I think the only thing that Nathan can hope to do here is to play out his exact game strategy, but just go at a lightning pace. Yep. Go as fast as he possibly can, and while Luke is not obliged to go to a lightning fast pace, he's not obliged to rush himself. Mm -hmm. At the same time, he does need to play in a pace that's respecting the whole status of the board and respecting his opponent, and so, even if Luke, for example, needs a little bit of time to think as any player would, yep. he can't take too long. And by Nathan playing at a lightning pace, he doesn't hurt himself, puts himself in the best position, and forces Luke to keep up in a sense. All right, here we do see an Ultra Ball going and getting rid of the Propagate Execute and a Zorark there. Um, I think that's a Shaman in the active spot uh, I think for, so. for Luke. Um, could be seen a traditional Zork play, you know, Tapu Lele, Bridget here. Um, last game, he didn't have a fortunate start of a supporter in his hand to fault with Bridget, so he had to get end this game, eyeing down Bridget to start getting some Zeruas and tr uh, Trebush down on the bench. Exactly, and Luke's already doing a pretty good job taking those shortcuts, already thinking about his prizes, looking at his choices for Bridget. He's already chained about two or three different actions right there between the Ultra Ball, getting the Tapu Lele, using its Wonder Tag ability to get the Bridget, and he's already selected his targets. And we've got a little bit of housekeeping here to make sure cards aren't prized. Yeah. I think this is a perfectly fine pace by Luke, especially think, for the first turn. And I think the big thing here that he's actually looking for as well is his energy counts and what's prized. I did see there yep. that's, that's skimming through. There's only three DCEs. Um, and I think I saw one, maybe two seconds there. And we obviously we don't know the contents of his hand. Um, but if one of those DCEs are prized, that's exactly what Nathan wants to see. Exactly, and unfortunately for Nathan, Luke had all of his energy accessible to him in the last game. So if Nathan wants to be able to plot some sort of surprise game two win, then he would really need to bank on just fast energy discard, and of course making his own actions as fast as possible. And he does have second energy in his hand as well, so it looks like it just might be the one DCE prize. So passing over into Nathan's turn, we do see a trick shovel, and there's an acrobike team mail and another acrobike coming off the bend there. Trainer's not going to be able to look at the top four cards of his deck, grab any trainer card he can find there, level ball, a couple and enhanced ones, hammer yeah. are the choices. Opting for the level ball to be able to get his setup going. My concern, though, is even at the reasonably fast pace that Nathan is going, it might not be fast enough to handle this time. And granted, we aren't necessarily saying this is a super realistic approach for Nathan to be able to win, but it's just about the only approach. And so yep. you need to play to your outs. And there, at least in my eyes, there's only this one out. And as long as Nathan plays to that out, then he's giving himself the best position to turn this match loss into at least a tie and a point. Yep, and that's, and that's, the, that's the plan here is to hopefully get to that one-on-one -on -one at least. It doesn't put him in too far or deep of a different bracket um, with this region right now. Regional probably about 400, 500 players as it is. Um, we do see another trainer's mill. 
and we're trying to see what he was cycling through there. But, yeah, I, I think you're, to your point there, it's going to be extremely tough for him to pull off a comeback here. Um, you know, Sableye is not really an aggressive deck. Nope. You know, it, it's not at for, all. <laughs> it's, it's there for the long run. It's, the, it's there for the whole party. You don't want to leave early. And, uh, and right now this party's uh, – <laughs> he's not going to be able to – it's going it's to end earlier than what he wants. The police come as early. Yeah, so, I mean, with the resources that Nathan has – and, and, and here's the thing. Okay, and good. So the, the hiker's coming down, so he gets a couple options. And I don't really think, as long as Luke has a, has a Zorg in his hand, I think that he can control this situation. This is so funny because this, like, this is kind of like a pseudo-enhanced hammer, really, you know, being yeah, able to the go trick hiker and then trick the shovel. Yeah. It's literally a pseudo-enhanced hammer. That's right. And so we might see that exact combo come into play. So we've got the hiker and... We've got that trick shovel just hide and yep, there it goes. He's gonna play the escape rope in his hand as well. He can start junk hunting now if he wants to, or hard retreat and save that escape rope. No need to have that energy on Vulpix there. We got that junk hunt going down and a, mm. li a little bit of hesitance, and I think this hesitance is killing Nathan to an extent. I mean, it's. I think he gets exactly what we get in the sense that it's an unfavorable match position. Yep. But you got to go ahead and go for those plays confidently as quickly as you can without he, running the risk of screwing him up. Right now he can chain. Um, actually, the party is actually not in a bad spot really in a thin sense there, but he has to really go fast. He has the chance to right now chain Verse Seeker and Trick Shovel right now, which means yeah. Hiker Trick Shovel. So as you see here, he already has Verse Seeker in hand. He already has Trick Shovel right now. If he's able to keep just taking away the one piece that he might need, energy, support, or whatever it might be, if it's at a fast enough pace here within this 10 minutes here, he may be able to pull it off here, but and it's going to take away any chance of that right now. Yeah, and that's the thing about Hiker, though, is that because it involves your opponent shuffling, yep. that's an aspect of the pace of the yep, game that right. you don't control. And even though note, that is the absolute optimal way to approach it, because there is any aspect of the game that is outside of your control when it comes to pace, it's going to go down even slower. And I'm not going to say, I don't mean that like in an absolute sense. I don't mean that it is slow because both players no. are, are they're playing Absolutely. at excellent paces. It's just... It's the nature of the game. Yeah, it's it, the nature of the exactly. game that you got to be accounted for. You know, it, whether whether a shuffle is you know five seconds, ten seconds is a factor you cannot control. Yeah, when it comes to judging how much time you have left it, to play. And plus, you have multiple meta rules going on in this sense where you have pace of play, which is a factor, but at the same time, you need sufficient shuffling. I mm -hmm. mean, and when you're in Luke's shoes, if your opponent's strategy might hinge entirely on hiker and trick shovel. You need to shuffle adequately, so mm -hmm. it's totally within your rights to shuffle to a sufficient extent. Not too much, not too long, but just right. I mean, we got Goldilocks shuffling going on. <laughs> All right, here on to Luke's turn right now. Let's see what we got here. Just shuffled right now. So he got the propagate execute here. Going to do the first trade with Zorark. Going in for trade number two. And even though Luke really does not have a whole lot of aggression going on at this point, he still has a pretty matured board right now where he's got several Zoroarks. He's got options for ability lock player. Mm -hmm. He's got a trash land chops. And so he could have everything and anything he wants. And he, you know what, even if this game went on untimed, he might even be able to pull out a second win in a similar way that he did. Potentially there. So he was able to uh, Ultra Ball away. Two Propagation Eggs there. Going to grab another Trash Lance Guard Boater. Um, or grab a Trash Lance Guard Boater, not another there. And he looks like he might be eyeing down a certain attacker or a certain person on uh, Nathan's side. Uh, does he have Guzma in hand to pull it off there, plus energy? Or a way to retreat this, uh, this Shaman out the active? Yep, and right on cue, Jeff, we got that, double, that Float Stone going down. Letting Luke get his action going on, deal a whole bunch of damage with Trash Alanche, and say, hey, Nathan, you got to flare grunt me. Can you mm. flare grunt me, bro? Do you have a way around I it? I think Nathan got back to the Hiker Trick Shovel. I do see Trick Shovel. I'm not sure if Hiker's there as well. There's the Verse Seeker. So he's able to do Verse Seeker. He's able to pull off the Hiker play again. However, he needs another sibling on the board, and he needs an energy to continue this chain. Yeah, and the thing is, if 
like I'm like looking at his hand right now, it seems like he might be very reliant on whatever he gets with that trainer's mail because he needs to be able to pull off the combo just as you explained it. But he would also ideally like to have some way to answer that Garbodor with its trash mm -hmm. alanche. Otherwise, he's going to fall behind yeah, another prize. That's true. Yes, yeah, so he needs a flare grunt. Needs some way to stop that trash from attack right now. He actually needs a way to um, get rid of the energy and take away Luke's hand because Luke did have another second energy in his hand to come right back with another trash alanche. So it's this. This might be that point there where Luke might be able to just pull off this game to win. So he does opt to get that Grimer now. We do see the little Grimer come down. Um, trainer's mail, gonna see four. No trainers yet, can't grab a T mail. Only thing he can grab is, is the Juniper. Juniper. Yeah, and nothing really good there. Nothing that really answers Nathan's situation in just the way that he wants it to. And that's the liability of running so many one and two copies of cards mm -hmm. in your list is that if you don't hit the combo the right way, then you're gonna flounder a bit. Oh, but we got that Flare Grunt going on, so we at least have some pressure applied with the Energy Discard. Curiously enough, though, no option to Junk Hunt right now. No Energy in hand to pull it off. Uh, we're going to see another Trash list right back with the other Psychic Energy already in his hand. Unless that was a Psychic Pokemon I might have been mistaken with there. Um, let's see what happens here. 5 minutes 45, still ticking down. We do see a Zora GX. Um, all right, let's see what he gets off these trades. Yep, and we got the propagation going on. And because it's a pretty easily repeated combo here, Luke doesn't have to spend too much time doing that. Just so simply show propagate trade. He actually does not have the psychic energy. I must have got him stick with another uh, psychic type Pokemon, very similar color. Um, it doesn't get it off but of the second But he has a float stone in his hand, so as long as he maybe has some way to score a knockout with Zoroark, and that just to pass, an so that we we did get to buy Nathan one turn here. Lysander Prism off the off the top deck. He can get rid of the Psychic and the Double Colorless if you'd like to with two Fire Pokemon in play, um, or even if he wanted to get rid of the Propagation Eggs. And I don't know if Nathan <laughs> has had the opportunity to figure out the exact 60 of Luke yet, based off the first game and what we've seen the second game. So. There we go. Oh, and we, oh, and we've got the we finally got the muck going down with its adventures appetite. Looking at the top six cards, seeing what items we have. One this card. Oh, two. There's two. Oh, okay. We've there's Pokecom and Rest Stretcher, and there's two energies he wishes he could uh, yeah. get rid of right there. But at least he's got a couple discards here, and the Rescue Stretcher can could actually be helpful to discard. I don't know if it'll make a difference given the context and the situation we're in right now. Yep. But. At least in a more abstract sense in terms of two guys playing a game, how that game would go down if you weren't worrying about the meta stuff like time and rules and mm -hmm. like like trivial things like that, you know, never mind the fact that they're completely relevant and absolutely essential to winning a tournament, but at least in terms of making the right oh, plays, man. it works. This is a big Juniper here. I believe there's two Verse Seekers in hand, plus the Lysander uh, Prism Star going to the Lost Zone. And he's got a dark. There's, there's a dark energy. Does he have another way to get a stabilizer? There is a level ball and a nest ball, so he'll have some options as mm -hmm. well to get some additional cards. Energy is retrieval as well if he were to whiff that dark energy. So he has the energy pots cards now. He needs to be able to get another stabilizer out once this one gets knocked out. Um, is there any in the deck? We've got a. There are no stabilizers in the deck. No, we've got a Ditto Prism Star. Not exactly like that's going to do a ton of good when Nathan already has two Alolan, or two Vulpix in play right now. Oh my goodness, this is this is not good. He's going to definitely have to grab the rest of stretcher off in the discard pile, off this junk hunt. But you know, this is limit. This is slows down a strategy here. And, and, and here's the interesting thing about an in real life game versus playing. Pokemon trading card game online is that yep. because you have that interaction there, because you see, you physically see that hesitance on the board, everyone sees that on stream right now, you inherently, intuitively know that there's a little bit of weakness on Nathan's board, and so Luke smells that weakness of the board and is like, you know what, okay, this is great, I'm feeling even better, I only have this one Sableye in my way, so let's go ahead and maybe knock it out and pull even further ahead. Time. 
the precious two minutes left. This is just, like, writing's been on the wall since the game started, the second game started. He, but I'm just generally curious. I mean, I guess maybe he's, he's hoping there's more time than what he feels is, is on his mind right now to take this game. Um, you know, sometimes he, I mean, he does have a watch in his hand, but sometimes when you're in the moment like that, you know, time can be eluded. Yeah. But he is a well-decorated player. He has been in this game for a long time. I'm sure he's very um, – uh, aware of, you know, understanding where the clock's at, at whenever he's playing at what point in the game, especially with a deck like Sableye here. Um, you got to know the clock. Exactly. And you know what? You got to give yourself a chance. And I really respect what Nathan's doing, not just for everybody watching, but of course for himself as a competitive player, where it's a completely unfavorable position, but he's given it his best college try anyways. He's mm -hmm. trying to go ahead and dig for what he can. And even if the odds of being able to win the second game are near zero. They aren't zero. Yep. And because of that, he's going to go ahead and do what he can. He might not necessarily fully realize he's got about a little bit more than a minute left, but he obviously realizes that first game took a while. And he's just doing a great job putting on a show with all these fantastic combos, all these great cards, old cards, new cards, everything in between. And giving Zorak a run for its money. Not quite enough, but a great job nonetheless. You know what I really like about these past few matches is that both players that had traditional decks adapted to these rogue decks really well in both games. You know, these are kind of like, you know, uh, going back to the previous matchup, you know, that deck mirrors Groudon, so you kind of had an idea how to approach that matchup. But in this one here, this is like a, while it's Sableye, it's like, you know, Sableye 2.0, maybe maybe Sableye yeah. 1.5, actually. Let's go with that. And it's, it's you know, there's no Garboder. It's, it's nine tails. It's going to lock in Black Market. And, it's, and, you know, Luke knowing how Sableye functions, holding on to those ends for the post-junk hunt plays, attacking at the right times. Fortunately for him, game one, hitting all the energies. I just want to, uh, you know, applaud how well both these players, these previous games, have adapted to these um, intriguing decks. Yeah, for sure. And... Like we talked about so much earlier in the first game, there are so many things you could get wrong in all the sequencing, mm -hmm. all the card interactions, and yet and yet our players didn't do that. Our Zorak players were able to expertly navigate through the situation, and we have the handshake. Nathan sees the writing on the wall. He had seen the writing on the wall and was like, you know what, let's just go ahead and put it away. Let's mm -hmm. get rested up for game for match three and then go from there because both these players still have plenty of opportunities Absolutely. for things to go well, things to get corrected, things to not go well because we have seven rounds left in this regional championship. There's a lot of time left there. Like I said, seven rounds left, a lot of opportunities to still make that inevitable day two and you know establish himself high in those rankings as well. Uh, what we'll do here, we'll take a little second here. Uh, we'll grab Luke Jurde for an interview, and we'll be back right with that here shortly. Welcome back to the stream here. We do have round two winner, Luke Jurdy, piloting that Zorak Garboder deck to a victory over Sableye Ninetales. So yeah. what was your reaction once you saw that Vulpix kind of get dropped down? Well, I knew it was just so he could stick Black Market, and I have Garbodor, so it's just quite the good matchup for me. Mm -hmm. the, the Lysander Prism Star kind of scared me a little because he can get rid of my psychic energies before I play Super Rod. 
But I managed to find the super out on the perfect turn. I think, that was, I think that was like one big thing right there is like you were both kind of one turn away in each sequence there where you were able to hit the super rod right before he was just about to play that last thing that prison started to get rid of the psychic energies away. So going into that matchup there, what is your ideal there? Is, is it setting up Garbodor? Is it just running through your deck as normal? Walk us through that there. Well, it's kind of just making sure that he can't get rid of all my energy before. Mm -hmm. So just conserving my resources and conserving like my dowsing and my stretcher and stuff to make sure I don't deck out and playing N at the right time mm -hmm. to get him out of like trick shovels and stuff. Yeah, we, that was one thing we noted during, uh, especially uh, uh, like the end, end portion of, of uh, game one, was that you were timing those ends each time he was trying to combo off those, uh, you know, enhanced hammer trick shovel, enhanced hammer trick shovel. It was constant times you were able to end those away, but then at times he was able to rally back and get those different denial cards. Was there a point in game one where you felt kind of frazzled at, you know, you were getting really thin. Like there's a point where you had to hit that last sidekick in DC um, off these different draws you were playing. Well, you know, walk us through how you were feeling then. Well, I was pretty comfortable once I hit the super rod because mm -hmm. I knew there were two energy left in my deck and I also had Guzman on deck. So I would be able to take my last prize regardless. Perfect, perfect. So going into game two, a um, little bit of a different tempo there. He was a little bit, you know, stumbled from the start. Clock was in your favor. Were you feeling kind of rattled at all, or you were you were confident that, you know, this is a good, this this is a round two sealed up? Yeah, I, I was pretty confident that I had it. There wasn't much time left. And Nathan even told me, he was like, if we weren't playing on stream, then I'd just scoop right now. We'll, okay. We'll, we'll do it for the fans. <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah, yeah, definitely played an interesting deck there. Um, I do like how you uh, map the Zora Garbador. So going, looking at the meta right now and how it's shifted over each regional, what made you uh, lead to you decide, I will play Zora Garbador for this regional. Well, the meta is really diverse right now, and I think that Zora Garb just has the most even matchups across the board and gives me a shot against everything. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Well, guys, here we have uh, Luke Jurdy, your round two winner. Moving on 2-0 here. Good luck to you the rest of the tournament. Thank you. And we'll be back with you with some round three action here shortly.